In this video, I'm giving you eight reasons why your cakes still look amateur. Hi, it's Carolyn. If you wanna learn how to make and decorate amazing cakes, then I would love for you to join me by hitting subscribe and the bell. <laughs> so today I want to talk about, well, first of all, before we get started, I have a new microphone and it is driving me insane. I'm trying to figure out how to work this road and I don't know if it's working. <laughs> I apologize if there is an echo or if it, if the sound doesn't doesn't sound right um, it's just like a learning curve that I have with this and I'm just trying to figure everything out but in this video like I said I want to give you eight reasons why your cakes still look amateur and not professional and I just want to put a disclaimer out there that I am not the best cake decorator ever but I have improved and these are the things over the past 20 years that I have improved upon that I have noticed have taken my cakes to another level. And when I first started, I was just like everyone else. I was a beginner. My cakes weren't always as good as they are today. I do have a video showing you my cakes from the beginning and how they progressed over the years. And I will link that in the description. So I am going to give you pictures of cakes that I did years ago versus cakes that I did once I learned these techniques so you can see the difference. All right, number one, the most important thing that I feel is most important <laughs> is to start with a smooth surface. So you want to be able to get your buttercream and your fondant very smooth because if you have a crisp, clean surface to work with, then everything is just gonna look so much better. So let's start with this handy manny cake. <laughs> and I've shown it in so many of my other videos. But first of all, look at Manny. <laughs> and this is why I don't do 3D figures. His legs are like, he only has thighs. He has no calves, no knees. <laughs> but anyway, we're not looking at Manny. Look at how this cake is iced in buttercream, how the, the edges are rounded. And the buttercream just isn't as smooth. Versus this handy mandy cake that I did a couple years later where I have sharp edges on the top and the buttercream is really smooth. So it really makes a big difference in how the cake would look. And I do have videos showing you how I get sharp edges and how I ice smooth buttercream cakes and those will be listed in the description. And to show you an example of fondant, this topsy-turvy cake that I made, and I was so proud of it when I did it, but looking back, I'm like, yeesh. <laughs> the, um, the fondant is not smooth at all because I didn't have a smooth surface underneath to cover the fondant with, and I covered it when the cake was warm. And it's just bumpy and lumpy, and it, it just looks amateur. Versus this topsy-turvy cake that I did a couple years later, where the edges are sharp and everything looks so much better. So you can see the difference that a smooth surface makes in your cakes. All right, number two is to have level tiers. And I think I've shown this cake in other videos, but this cake, do you see how the front corner is just kind of drooping down a little bit <laughs> and it's not even? The tiers aren't level, aren't straight across and they droop or on a round cake if it isn't level. Basically, you want it to be level. It's just gonna look a little off. Versus when I did this cake, and this was a wedding cake, and it's a square cake, and let me tell you, I did this, there's a black background on here, so this was probably like 10 years ago that I did, and it's prob probably the last square cake that I made because it drives me crazy. <laughs> And that's because doing square cakes involves an entire labor intensive practice, if you will, then I just ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> but you can see in this wedding cake, everything is sharp and square and level. So you have to be able to take the time to make everything level and it's just going to look so much better. And I'm sorry, I don't have any videos. Why am I going like this? <laughs> showing you how I do square cakes just because I haven't made one in forever because it makes me a little crazy. <laughs> but if I do make a square cake in the future, I will film how I make it. And I show you how to ice smooth level cakes in my buttercream icing cakes video. <laughs> It'll be linked in the description. The third thing that is keeping your cakes looking amateur is not thinking outside of the box when it comes to serving sizes. And I have a video talking about this, how I use different size cake pans and different heights to get visual interest out of my cakes. 
and I will link that in the description. But if somebody asks for a cake to feed 30 people, do you automatically just do a six inch and an eight inch? I want you guys to start to think outside of the box and get different heights of your cakes and different sizes to, to build a little more visual interest. So I have two examples for this. The first one are cakes to feed 60 people. So this, this very first cake is one that has a little pram on the top, and this is a 12 inch on the bottom and an eight inch on the top. And this is one of those examples of those cakes that I say I don't do anymore because they're short and wide and they just don't look great, right? So what I like to do instead is build a little, build it a little taller so it's not so short and wide like I did in this cake. The bottom tier is 10 inch, the middle tier is a one layer eight inch and the top tier is a six inch and this cake feeds 60 as well. And again, I do explain in that video how I do like shorter tiers and taller tiers to get different serving sizes and that is linked in the description. And just to give you another example of this, uh, cakes to feed 40 people. So this little black dress cake is nine inches and seven inches and this was still again back in the day where I made cakes that were short and wide. And you can see there's so much space on that top tier. I just feel like it doesn't look right versus doing this cake, which also feeds 40. But do you see how the bottom tier is a tall tier? So it's a double barrel cake. And I actually have a video showing you how I make a double barrel cake and that will be linked in the description. But this is a double barrel seven inch cake and a five inch cake on top. And it just, I just feel like narrow, tall cakes look so much better than short and wide ones. Does anyone else agree with me? I think people have to agree. I just feel like those short and wide cakes are just an old school way of doing it. So try to think outside of the box when you are creating your cakes to get different heights and different sizes. Number four, that is keeping your cakes looking amateur, is not having clean, crisp decorations on your cakes. And I'm gonna show you examples of casino themed cakes. And you can see this one, I'm gonna to try to zoom in. Do you see how there's cornstarch on the chips on the top? Like I seriously, Carolyn, you couldn't take a, a brush and just dust that excess cornstarch off. <laughs> and also I used buttercream and wrote on the roulette number. Why is it so hard to say? I wrote the roulette numbers on, which it looks okay, but it still just looks a little too amateur. And also I did that Las Vegas sign with edible markers. I did not have an edible printer at the time, so that's what worked best for me. However, it's not perfect, right? Like it just doesn't look right versus this casino themed cake where I did the Vegas sign. I printed out an edible image of it. It looks so much more crisp and clean. And the numbers on the roulette wheel on the cake board, I use tappets and I have a video showing you how I use tappets. They can be a little pain, a little bit of a pain in the butt if you don't know how to use them correctly. But the tappets look so much better than the buttercream numbers. And also I clean the decorations. I, I don't let the cornstarch stay on there. I wipe it off with a dry brush or you can steam the cakes or use a little bit of shortening to get rid of any excess cornstarch or imperfections that would be on the cake. So make sure you take the time to make the decorations look crisp and clean, and that will make your cakes look more professional. All right, the fifth thing that you may be doing that keep your cakes looking a little amateur is writing on them instead of doing fondant decorations. Now, I do still write on my cakes from time to time. I guess it all depends on the design, but I'm gonna show you two very similar cakes that one has writing and one has fondant so you can see the difference. So this was a cake, a candy themed cake that I did so many years ago and it was one of my favorite cakes at the time. I was so proud of this one. But can you see the number one and the name I wrote on there. So I did a pattern transfer. Basically, I can show you how I do that. I'll link a video below showing you how I do that. I transferred the letters on the cake and then I traced them with buttercream. Versus this cake which is very similar, but for the number one and for the name, I cut the letters and the numbers out of fondant and it just looks so much more crisp and clean. And I have videos showing you how I do fondant names and numbers and that will be linked in the description. So it does take a little bit more time to hand cut all the letters, but it's totally worth it. It makes your cakes look so much better. So the sixth thing that could be keeping your cakes looking 
amateur is not adding any depth to your decorations by using dust and airbrushing. So to show you an example, this little rubber ducky in a, in a wooden barrel, <laughs> I did this years ago. This was probably in 2008, 2007, something like that. But it's before I had an airbrush machine, before I knew about dust. And you see the wooden panels, it, the cake is nice, but it just doesn't look very exciting, right? Versus this wooden barrel cake that I did, and I actually have a video showing you how I do that, and that will be linked below. And this one, I put more detail in the wood, and I use my airbrush on there to get more depth and more interest. Do you see how it just looks a lot better having different shades of coloring in there? And also another example showing you this little Fortnite hamburger thing. <laughs> I've never played Fortnite. I don't know what it is. But anyway, do you see on the left? So I made it just the fondant and then I shaded it in with petal dust. And you see how it brings the piece to life? It just makes your pieces and your cakes look so much better if you take the time to use dust and airbrush machines to color them in. And an airbrush machine is a little pricey but once you have it it's totally worth it you're going to use it all the time so i will find the one that i have and link it in the description the seventh thing that you are doing that could be keeping your cakes looking amateur is doing predictable designs and i hope i can explain this correctly i will use pictures to show what i mean so i did this superman cake years ago and it was a very popular design back in the day just a Superman and the cape, and it's a nice cake, but it needs to be a little bit more exciting, right? So fast forward many years later, I have the topper standing up, and I have a little edible image Superman on there, and I have some fondant decorations. It's just brought to another level. It just looks a little bit more exciting than that plain Superman cape. And this example, this bowling cake. So this one is nice. I feel like it's a plain, simple design, and I feel like it's predictable because the topper with the ball and the pins, <laughs> why did I do that? The pins on top and the ball, right? Like I use the I in the name as, as a pin and, and that's a little creative, but I feel like it could be taken to another level. So a recent bowling cake that I did, I did some splatter paint in the background. We have the little bowling ball with a birthday hat on it. And I made the name a little bigger and I have like, bowl and strike I think there's like other words on there so I tried to do like when I'm doing something like this I I would google something like bowling clip art and just see what kind of pictures come up to help give me some ideas of what I can put on the cake but do you see how doing the splatter paint in the background versus just having the plain ice cake it just takes it up to another level and side note <laughs> I found this bowling picture I did a bowling cake years ago for my friend's grandfather and look at the ball. <laughs> why, is it, why is it flat and then kind of round? Like, oh, uh, geez. So if I did this today, I would use a styrofoam ball rather than trying to use Rice Krispies or cake. I don't even know what I did with that. But you see how I put a border around it? Like, maybe that'll hide it. <laughs> anyway, I just wanted to put that in there and show you. And one more example of a predictable design is polka dots and stripes. So I found this cake that I did years ago that has polka dots and stripes on it. And it's all right, it's cute, but look at the stripes and the polka dots. While I did try to be a little different with it, I lined up the polka dots in a row, right? And I did different colors of the stripes and I put like a little stitching detail on there. I, I feel like it just doesn't look like a wow cake. Like it, it could look so much better. And I also don't like how the stripes come all the way up the bottom tier and then on the top. Okay, I just, I don't know. It's just a way that we used to do them, but I don't do it like that anymore. Instead, I do something like this and I have a video showing you how I make this cake and that'll be linked below. But do you see how the stripes, they stop at the very top and they're all next to each other. I just feel like it looks so much better when the stripes are touching and in the silver stripes, I did a little bit of texture on it and the polka dots as well. I did different colors and different sizes and I kind of pushed them all together. I just, I don't know. So you can think outside of the box and do stripes and polka dots a different way that doesn't make it look so plain and predictable. And numero eight, wait, numero eight, <laughs> numero ocho. The final thing that I feel like 
I used to do that kept my cakes looking really amateur and maybe you're doing it as well is doing things that you don't like to do and I always go back to if you watch my videos you know I don't like doing 3d figures because we saw what handy manny looked like <laughs> and that big fat monkey that I made I just I just don't like doing them and when I first started making cakes I thought that's what you had to do you have to make 3d figures until I found two-dimensional figures which I feel like I'm so much better at and maybe you hate doing two-dimensional and you love doing 3d you find the thing that you like to do and you get really good at it and it just makes your cakes look so much better so look at this 3d elephant that I did and he's okay like it's it's not bad it's not great he's just an elephant versus the elephant I did on this circus cake and he's two-dimensional and he's adorable, right? And I do have a video showing you how I make, I, why do I always do this? Like I'm whispering, I don't know. <laughs> I have a video showing you how I do that circus theme cake and that'll be linked in the description. So no shame in my two-dimensional character game, right? It's just something that I found that I like to do. And in turn, my cakes look more professional because I'm much better at doing the two-dimensional figures. And also, I don't like making sculpted cakes. And the other, I think last week I posted a video on how I do a sculpted hat cake. That's pretty easy. Versus doing this stupid car. <laughs> and I'm still mad at Colleen for making me make this cake for her. Um, and she, I saw her not too long ago. And she's like, we loved that cake. I mean, it's, it's not horrible. Again, it's not great. It's not horrible. I've seen car cakes that look so much better. But now if somebody asks me to make a car themed cake, I do something like this where the car, again, it's two dimensional and it's, it's not a 3D car, but it still looks nice. And I feel like the cake looks much more professional doing it this way. So there you go. There are my eight reasons why your cakes might still look amateur. And I encourage you guys just to practice. It doesn't come immediately. I've been doing this for 20 years and every cake that I make, I didn't love, but it's a lesson learned. If something didn't turn out the way that I liked it, I knew to do it differently the next time. And again, I have tons of videos showing you how I do all of these techniques that I went over and they will be linked in the description. So I think that's it. If you guys have any questions or comments, leave them below and you can keep in touch on socials and check out my website. It's listed in the description. And if you want to stick around, you can watch this video next and hit subscribe and the bell if you haven't already. Please like this video if you liked it. Thank you so much for watching and remember, it's cake. Have fun. I will see you on the next one. Bye.